Hey, Zach. No, nothing. This town sure is peaceful, Zack. Yes, I know. I know what you're about to say. But that's why we're here. To protect this peace. Isn't that right, Zack? So, what do you think of him? Yes, I'm talking about him. Umba. Is the skeletal gentleman friend or foe? Or does he merely exist outside the realms of evil? Still too early to tell, but it's clear that he'll be the key to uncovering this case's mysteries. That's what my soul tells me. By the way, Zack, Hoondon feels very familiar to me. You might even say he reminds me. Hey, Zack. No, nothing. Just felt like saying that.
Hey, Zach. No, nothing. Just felt like saying that. <laughs> so, what do you think of him? Yes, I'm talking about him. Who not? Is the skeletal gentleman friend or foe? Or does he merely exist outside the realms of either? Still too early to tell. But it's clear that he'll be the key to uncovering this case's mysteries. That's what my soul tells me. By the way, Zack, Hoongan feels very familiar to me. You might even say he reminds me of someone. Yes, I think I see the connection now. A cheerful, wise, yet also mysterious African-American who appeared in a variety of different films. My mind must be overlapping him with the skeletal gentleman. Do you remember his name? Ah, yes, that's it. Scatman Crothers. In 1980, he played Dick Halloran in The Shining. And in 1983, he was in The Twilight Zone. He played the man who invited all those elderly folks into a strange new world. I knew it, Zach. There's definitely a connection here, but he's a bit too old. Scatman's more of a sage character. Our skeletal gentleman is a little younger, isn't he? Yes. They have different body types, but what about Forrest Whitaker? He made his debut in 1982 in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Then he was in Platoon and The Color of Money, both released in 1986, followed by Good Morning Vietnam in 1987. Oh, he was in Bird in 1988. Impressive filmography. Across the 80s, he transformed his... Zach, we're heading toward the Mississippi River, and crossing that river isn't going to help us solve this case. Let's head back into town. Zack, we're heading toward the Mississippi River, and crossing that river isn't going to help us solve this case. Let's head back into town. Zack, we're heading toward the Mississippi River, and crossing that river isn't going to help us solve this case. Let's head back into town.
Did you know what I yet? The streets in New Orleans were a mess. All busted up and undergoing maintenance. The city was built on a swamp, so the ground is soft. All it takes is some heavy rain to cave it all in. There were also a lot of places where large tree roots were pushing up parts of the asphalt and the sidewalk. Those bumps were dangerous even when we still had our car, remember? But this town is different. The streets are all paved so cleanly that we can skate along them without a care in the world. And there's hardly any trash or graffiti to be found anywhere. The Clarksons truly do control this place, for better or worse. It's a good example of how allowing certain people to rise to power can have positive effects as well. Also, don't you find that southern people are remarkably friendly, even to total strangers? Both here and in New Orleans, I've been amazed at how cordial everyone is. Is it just the way things are down here? You certainly don't see that sort of thing in New York or D.C. They never stop to chit-chat, especially when ordering food. They only say what's necessary, without any decoration. The customer only makes eye contact with the waiter about once every three times they interact. But that's just how it is. Isn't that right, Sam? The human relationships here are as fluid as an inorganic mechanism running on the smoothest, purest oil there is. And it feels strangely comfortable after spending time in New Orleans and coming here. I think I'm starting to like the Southern disposition. They even have their own breed of bizarre crimes. And besides, the New Orleans area is famous for its paranormal culture. I'm sure it'll entertain us somehow. It's still a bit of a ways off. Perhaps we can also do a little case study for our post-retirement plan. What? You still think it's too early for that? I wouldn't say so. It's never too early to be prepared. Come on, I know you're with me on this one, Zach. Did you notice it yet? The streets in New Orleans were a mess. All busted up and undergoing maintenance. The city was built on a swamp, so the ground was soft. All it takes is some heavy rain to cave it all in. There were also a lot of places where large tree roots were pushing up parts of the asphalt and the sidewalk. Those bumps were dangerous even when we still had our car, remember? But this town is different. The streets are all paved so cleanly that we can skate along them without a care in the world. And there's hardly any trash or graffiti to be found anywhere. The Clarksons truly do control this place, for better or worse. It's a good example of how allowing certain people to rise to power can have positive effects as well. Also, don't you find that southern people are remarkably friendly, even to total strangers? Both here and in New Orleans, I've been amazed at how cordial everyone is. Is it just the way things are down here? You certainly don't see that sort of thing in New York or D.C. They never stop to chit-chat, especially when ordering food. They only say what's necessary. Smarty pants. Yep. <laughs> Your smarty pants. Yep. <laughs>
This town sure is peaceful, Zed. outside the realms of Uther. Still too early to tell. But it's clear that he'll be the key to uncovering this case's mysteries. That's what my soul tells me. By the way, Zack, Ungan feels very familiar to me. You might even say he reminds me of someone. Yes, I think I see the connection now. A cheerful, wise, yet also mysterious African-American who appears... 